So I know I recently just put out a video about embracing uncertainty, and I just wanted to even take that a step further and talk about how that could apply to your entire life in the broader sense. So I also want you to know that, you know, maybe you might be thinking that these things might sound really esoteric and, you know, it's, it's great in theory, but it doesn't work in practice. But I also want to let you know that these aren't just things that I've read in books or coming up with theories, abstract theories that, you know, sound good, but don't actually work in practice. I'm just sharing the experiences I personally had and, you know, it could potentially help you as well. Uh, it really depends on where you're at and you know how you want to carry it out or where you're at in your journey but i'm just sharing from my direct personal experience and there's two uh, things that come immediately to mind when i think about this idea about embracing uncertainty even beyond just these specific examples of let's say going to talk to girls or starting a business things like that um, one example was definitely during an inflection point in my life where I didn't really know what I was doing, but I realized that in that not knowing, that's where everything was happening. So my ability to let go would allow me to let things happen, right? So, so here's the thing is that sometimes our ego steps in and we want to force a certain outcome to happen. Now, I remember one time I think I was around 23, 24 years old. I was in my early 20s and I uh, didn't really ha have like a stable, you know, career or anything like that. I was working jobs that were decent, but it wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do forever. Um, and I was living in LA and I remember I had this intuition that I wanted to move to Vegas. And I had that in the back of my mind for a bit. And I remember the opportunity came up and I certainly wasn't ready for the opportunity. I didn't have enough money saved up and I didn't really have anything lined up in Vegas. But when the opportunity came up, that was probably one of the first moments in my life where I felt like I truly just surrendered to it. And I told myself, you know what? I don't have anything prepared. I don't have anything lined up. I'm just going to take the leap and make it happen. So that's what I did. And I think I've probably shared this before about my experience doing that, but you know, I had to sleep in the casino for the first night and lived in an unfurnished apartment for a month. Um, you know, went through some hardships, I suppose, trying to, to keep things afloat. Uh, there was a week where Maybe I was down to my last $8 in my, my entire net worth. Um, well, that's, I, I guess I could have sold my computer because I did have a computer in my possession. But that being said, I had, I was down to about $8 and I remember uh, just eating chicken nuggets and sunflower seeds, 10 chicken nuggets a day and had a bag of sunflower seeds to satiate my hunger pangs until my first paycheck at that job that I had just gotten in Vegas. Um, it was a very simple job, going door to door, basically putting flyers on doors. And I remember just making that happen, but it started with that commitment of letting go, surrendering to the moments, trusting my intuition, and not letting my conscious, rational mind talk me out of it. Because really, I mean, oftentimes, especially in Western culture, we value being logical right? What's, what's the smart thing to do here? What's, you know, what makes sense on paper? What are the pros and the cons of doing this? I did none of that. In that moment, I didn't do that. Instead, I tried to do something different because what I realized is the outcomes that I had gotten up to that point in my life had got me to where I was. So I was very, very logical up until that point, right? I was, I would make pros and cons lists for everything. I would schedule out my day in five minute increments from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. Uh, I, was, I was very efficient in that way. And I suppose there is some value in being able to cultivate that, those skills of conscientiousness in some respect. But what I came to realize is it wasn't necessarily moving my life forward, even though I felt it was, because it gives you that sense of control. It 
makes you feel like you have control over the situation when you think logically about everything and you are hyper analytical and I get it because that's who I was. Um, but that was the first moment where I did something that some people would consider irrational, right? No job lined up. I quit my job. I sold my car. And with that, with that bit of money, because, you know, I was, it wasn't like a, a windfall of cash. It was really just enough to be able to put down a security deposit and get an unfurnished apartment for that first month. And really it was about the trust, right? Letting go of control and trusting. So it's trust versus control. And in that moment, I decided to just let go and trust that things would work out. So some people might even call that stupid. And maybe in, sense, in some sense of the word, it might be, right? Maybe that's the point, is when we stop thinking so much and when we don't have to know everything, when we don't have to control each situation or outcome before it happens, sometimes that's where things are created. That allows space for things to come about. And so that's the process that I've come to follow is you, know, you don't have to do this for everything. You don't have to totally rearrange your life all the time. But every once in a while, you have, will have an intuition about something. And maybe even now, as you're thinking about it, maybe there's a thing that you haven't taken action on because you've been talking yourself out of it over and over again. Maybe it's a business that you've been wanting to start. Or maybe it's you know a girl that you wanted to ask out. Ask out. Or maybe it's you know some letting go of something in your life or someone in your life. It could be one of these things, right? But it's our rational mind that's telling us, no, just do the smart thing. And so here's the thing is, disclaimer, you don't have to instantly go out and quit your job and start a business right now if you're watching this video. You can if you want to. I'm just saying that I'm not telling you to just drop everything immediately and go, go ahead and do that. But what I'm, I am saying is you can trust yourself learn to trust yourself and learn to trust the universe or higher consciousness or whatever you want to call it, that things will work out. And you don't, you certainly don't have to take this perspective. I'm just sharing the perspective that I have and that has, that I feel like has gotten me to where I am today and for better or for worse, you know, you, you don't necessarily, maybe you don't want to live the way I, I live my life and that's totally fine. Um, you could just listen to what I have to say, but, um, but yeah, ultimately what I've seen is as I've learned to do that more, things just become more effortless and more enjoyable. And I'll even give a, an example. Um, so another example of this was when I was in grad school and I remember feeling like I didn't really want to be there. And for the longest time, that was my goal. I got into my dream grad school, dream program that I was thinking about for a long time after doing all these spreadsheets and these pros and cons lists. And I had some crazy formulas in a spreadsheet to be able to calculate, okay, is this the, my ideal grad school? Which one should I pick? And for me, that, that was it. And I remember getting there though. And in my mind, it was telling me, no, you should stay and stick it out because this is what you had been aspiring for for years, literally. And for such a long time that you knew that that's what you wanted. But something in my heart was telling me, no, this isn't for you. This, it just doesn't feel, there was something that felt off about it. And I knew it in my heart, but my mind kept telling me, no, just stick it out. This is what you've been going for. This is, you know, you're making your dreams happen uh, sort of thing. Because I initially wanted to become a professor working in a university and, and things like that. But um but my heart was telling me something different. And I remember it was during Christmas break and I, I just took the leap and I submitted my withdrawal form. I left, um, traveled for a little bit in Europe and because the grad school was, was in Europe and uh, I traveled for a bit and then I came back and had no plans, had nothing lined up, didn't have a job or anything like that, but everything just sort of aligned and things worked out and my initial intention 
behind leaving grad school was I had this inspiration inspiration that I wanted to start an online business. And granted, it wasn't working for a while and I thought that it wasn't, there were some moments where I really doubted myself and I didn't think that I was ever going to be able to make it work, to be able to work remotely and then you know work online, uh, make a good income and be able to travel or go wherever I wanted to really. That was my aspiration. And it's so interesting looking back on it now. I didn't even think about this so much, but you know, especially in the last couple of years, I'm glad that I did that when I did because this was back in 2015 when I dropped out and I'd started learning the skills of, of working online. And now I almost was ahead of the curve in some sense when it came to the pandemic and the situation there because at, at that point I had already you know, learn the skills of being able to, to make money online and work remotely. And so now looking back on it, it's almost like that was supposed to happen that way. Right? It was supposed to happen that way. But it didn't really make sense in the moment. And especially when things got hard, it, it d definitely felt like it didn't make sense. But now looking back on the whole journey in its entirety, I'm like, okay, that's where that's why I, I did that. Or you know, sometimes it's about taking that leap because you have your intuition and it's about trusting that. So I'll even give a recent example and this is kind of a funny one. It's a smaller one. And I was, um, I was having dinner with my friend a few days ago and I remember we were having a great time and we we're talking and then the bill came and I was just like, I got it. And I gave the waitress my credit card and he's like oh wait why why are you paying and i was like i don't know <laughs> i was just like i don't know and then um and then for some reason he started laughing he thought that was funny he's like you don't know it's like yeah i just i felt like it and in that moment now looking back on it because we were laughing at that uh, because it was just so honest that there was no reason or justification for that action but i was literally just doing what i felt like doing and if we could carry that into pretty much almost every decision that we make, imagine what life would be like, right? You're just living in flow. You're doing what you feel like you want to do. And think about, you know, the situations that come up if you want to talk to someone and there's some reason that you feel like you want to talk to them. What if there was no survival brain kicking in telling you and trying to talk you out of it telling you oh you shouldn't do that do that because of this reason or that reason or you know x y and z what if instead we turned that off and we just walked over and we started a conversation imagine what life would be like if we lived from that space of full presence a full creation of just letting things happen and surrendering, surrendering fully to the moment. So really ab applies in a broader context beyond just dating and things like that. Um, and once again, these are things that I've practiced and continue to practice in my life. So these are, this is not just theory for me. This is how I live my life and you don't necessarily have to do it the same way or you, if you want to take bits and pieces of it or try it out for yourself, then by all means go for it. Um, I'm not telling you how you should live your life. It's ultimately your decision and I'm just sharing my experience. So that's pretty much all I have to share at the moment, but I just want to reinforce that concept and then also just share some additional thoughts on it that it's not just about um, about dating or, or closing deals or things like that. It, it applies to even larger life decisions about just following your intuition, following where that is. And it can be scary sometimes. And I acknowledge that too. Because when, as soon as your rational mind does kick in, it's telling you, oh, take the smart move, right? But you're denying yourself and you know you're denying yourself in your heart, the decision and you're delaying it, and you're delaying it, whether that's you know your relationship or business or whatever it is, then that can lead to a lot of conflict and you might not even notice it, but over time, it can even lead to a lot of sadness or um, 
just internal resistance within you and you you start to deny yourself happiness sometimes i actually went through this where i made one decision about it was related to to relationships and i knew that it was misaligned with what i truly wanted it was almost like i was denying myself happiness and that led to me turning down an opportunity that i felt like would be great for me um, in terms you know financially it was about you know a few months later a year later and so i kept making these decisions denying myself what i felt like i truly wanted because i was living in this paradigm of i should just take the smart decision and granted i'm not saying you have to just be totally stupid it's not a black or white thing right it's not about being smart or stupid it's about doing what you feel like intuitively resonates with you right this is not a discussion about um, intelligence or anything like that in fact it's more about tapping in to how you feel so i'll leave it at that and i'll talk to you later take care